Be bold, be courageous, please support background checks. Thank you very much. In her own words, former Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords makes a plea to lawmakers on gun control. Standing together, the January 8th survivors are fighting for change where their nightmare began. Hello and thanks for joining us. I'm Guy Ashley. And I'm Jennifer Waddell. We knew this day would come, didn't we? Mm -hmm. For the first time publicly, Gabrielle Giffords returns to the place where a gunman nearly killed her. She and other survivors using the scene of the mass shooting to ask for universal background checks for gun purchases. And we have Nine On Your Side team coverage on this momentous event. Corey Marshall has community reaction. But we begin with Valerie Cavazos, who joins us live with exactly what happened today. Valerie? Yeah, you know, you had mentioned this before. It is not the first time that Gabby Giffords returned to this site where a gunman nearly ended her life, but it is the first time in public. And I have to say, it was pretty surreal to see her here again today. And uh, she was joined by her husband, Mark Kelly, and the victims of the January 8th shooting to deliver a timely message to Congress. Former Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords and husband Mark Kelly make it clear they stand behind their Second Amendment rights. I don't think you'll find somebody that's a stronger supporter of the Second Amendment than Gabby and I. We own firearms for the same reasons many Americans do. But today's discussion, Kelly says, isn't about gun rights. It's about public safety. And keeping guns out of the hands of the dangerously mentally ill and criminals. Giffords and Kelly are urging senators, including John McCain and Jeff Flake, to pass legislation requiring universal background checks for gun purchases. If that information was there, it's pretty clear that the man who did this at this Safeway on January 8th of 2011 would have failed that background check. But Kelly says that's only part of the problem. And the other problem is that he would have easily been able to go down the street to a gun show or on the internet to gain access to a firearm without being subject to a background check. Kelly says statistics show universal background checks and closing gun show loopholes are supported by a majority of Americans and the NRA. So it is clear that this legislation could do a very common sense thing to make it more difficult for criminals and the mentally ill to have access to a firearm. Though Kelly delivered most of the message, the former congresswoman offered this final appeal. Be bold, be courageous, please support background checks. Thank you very much. The gun control group, started by Giffords and Kelly, uh, Americans for Responsible Solutions, sent this letter to both Arizona senators. It includes all the signatures of the victims of the January 8th shooting, and the uh, Senate Judiciary Committee is scheduled to take up uh, tougher firearm regulations tomorrow. Reporting live from the east side, I'm Valerie Cavazos, KGA9. I'm sorry, from, from uh, the northwest side. Valerie, some of the victims and relatives joined Giffords and Kelly. What did they say? Well, they did speak out today, and each one shared a different perspective on why they are supporting this legislation. It's obvious, but again, those different perspectives kind of give some uh, credibility, some merit, some weight behind uh, this legislation, and we'll hear from some of them at 6 o'clock. You're right, Valerie. That was a surreal scene today. Thank you. The words and stories shared today were heartbreaking, but the victims spoke with a purpose. They did. Their pain and their loss is a reminder of why they are fighting. 26 months ago, I picked up Christina in her driveway. She kissed her mom goodbye. She kissed her mother goodbye. It's very hard for me to be here today, here where my son was gunned down here where his body lied on that sidewalk for many hours, dead. The memories of their loved ones are giving the victims the fuel to fight, but these memories also are inspiring the community to make a change. Our Corey Marshall continues not on your side. Team coverage at the Safeway at Oracle and Ina. Jen, this second Giffords arrived 
people just started cheering. One person right by me, he shouted, welcome home, Gabby. Another right next to me, we love you, Gabby. It's something you could not only hear, but it's a sentiment you could really feel. melded with muddled messages from the former congresswoman's one-time constituents. I, I just getting extremely emotional. I'm sorry. Juliet Christiane lives near this now infamous Safeway. It's hard not to feel an emotional connection to the words spoken here today, to what happened here today. Oh, it's, it's horrible. If you shop here all the time, you can't help but think. She says, like many, it's hard to see people once again huddled in this parking lot. Sad. Sad. Nancy Lingby is a longtime supporter of Giffords. In fact, she says if it hadn't been for a routine errand running long that fateful morning, January 8th, 2011, she would have been at the shooting scene. You know, you hear the victims from this, and then you hear the victims from the other ones around the country, and it, it's time something changes. People here say they're encouraged that change may be on the move. A little over two years later now, is it frustrating that we're having the same discussion? I, I think it is because we, we see it happen every, so often. We just say, oh, this time will be the wake-up call, this time will be the wake-up call, and we really have to have a wake-up call, and hopefully this is it. This legislation could do a very common-sense thing. We have a great community here, and I really feel that people need to get together, and we need to set an example. <laughs> And I want to share a really sweet moment. Among the applause, you could hear the former congresswoman thanking the crowd as she left. Live on the northwest side, Corey Marshall, KGA 9 on your side. Corey, I know that you had a candid conversation with some of the supporters there. Uh, that's right. And you know, almost everyone that I spoke with said they didn't just want to be here uh, today, they felt compelled to be here today. And that says a lot, Jen. Corey, thank you.